we've shared with you everything that we know at this point and what's going to happen and you know, the timelines, etc. So uh, I'll open up uh, for any questions and see if we can answer them at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they are not able to adequately address these issues, we do our share as we have been doing. Well, where does that place us? Is that going to be then the next step? When we have to show cause? Good, if we don't address it, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, part of it is uh, beyond our control. The board issues are beyond our control. The, 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 those items that specifically address the board. But those others, you saw, we've already partially addressed them. I think we just need to go through and clean them up and help the district with especially the mapping part and clearing that up because that decision making is still not clear in certain areas. And I think we can work our way through that one, uh, several of those. There's about three or four in there that I think we have a hand in. Uh, there's two or three others. But beyond that, the board has to govern themselves and address. But if the board doesn't do its job right, we can still be punished. Yes. <coughs> Linda? Um, now, Paradox in our college and also at Ventura, where we successfully got off warning, we had a go to person, a point person, she's sitting right here. Mm -hmm. Then you had help. You had Bala Rushy King. We put all the data on SharePoint. Mm -hmm. We all got to look at the data. We all got to go to meetings. The district did not, as far as I could discern, have a parallel process for the district's issues. I never saw the data, and I'm part of their constituency. So why was there, who's the point person at the district? Who's really responsible for this having happened? Who was supposed to write the report? Where has the data been put up? And have you guys ever seen any of it? <laughs> well, in terms of who writes the report, I think the chancellor took the primary role in that, but he had to deal with his staff and the vice chancellor and, and all did that. did they have data the way we did? I mean, because my sense of the accreditors, they spent hours in their hotel room, pouring over that data, came in with a list, a short list of questions that were right to the point based on that data, and if there was no data in the first place, if I were them, I would just be throwing up my hands, because I know how they worked here. So Erica, what's your sense of, did they do that at the district? Did they have the data? You know, I, that's a good question. I think um, they may not have had the data in the same way that we presented data, especially where we were showing our how we were doing our program review, those kinds of things. I think what they did was review data and it, and it indicates in the report the kinds of things that they did. They interviewed people, they looked at minutes of district meetings, they looked at board minutes. So they looked at, they looked at data that looks a little differently than what we did. The question is whether or not, the question, I think what it comes down to is that they had evidence, and if you saw our self-study, it couldn't be bound all in one thing. It had to be bound in two, and much of that was the district data. Yeah. Um, the, but when they reviewed the data, they, it, as you see, it says partial, partially met. It's because they said, okay, we see that you have this new committee in place, or you have this new process in place, but it's still not clear how it works. So what? So that's the task of the district at this point is to really read that that letter, uh, that action letter closely, and go back to the evidence that they did present and see why it wasn't sufficient. Unlike some districts who have a vice chancellor who's kind of an all-purpose vice chancellor right. who could be assigned to this kind of task, we have three vice chancellors that are really in different functional areas. Then we have the chancellor. Chancellor's leaving. So how is this all going to get organized so that somebody actually does this work? Because as you know, it has it's work and it has to be done and it needs to support staff and, and dedication. Just on the issue, yes, there are committees. I've read those minutes too. They they pushed on making district policies less impeding to us, but did they show that to the commission? Did they pull that? I mean, nobody wants to read through. 40 pages of minutes to find one little piece of evidence, you gotta pull it out and have it be there so that they can see it. Who's gonna do that of the district? Well, that's a good question. I think that's the dialogue we're having right now. 
I want a name. I want another. I'd be like, well, your name was on. I'm sorry, but your name was on. You were the person here. It's yeah. the Erica Nudeau's responsible. And Ramiro was responsible at Ventura. And had it fallen apart, we'd all be looking at you going, yeah. Erica. And so I, I don't I think things get here. done otherwise. I don't think yeah. things get done um, unless somebody's assigned to do them and held to be responsible for doing them, whether they're students, faculty, or the chancellor. Somebody's name has to be the primary point person where if we did have data or concerns, because I think what happened is at all three campuses, because I think it really did happen, faculty mentioned that the board doesn't, the district doesn't always communicate well. But the district doesn't give us any way of telling them that. Mm -hmm. And that's one of, that's what the first one is, right? That we're not, we're not integrated in the functional sense. There's no flow charts. If you're upset about something or the policy's not clear, nobody knows where to go. So how can we fix this without us involved as well? So we have to know who to talk to and be permitted to talk to them instead of discouraged from talking to them, mm -hmm. right? So I want, an, I want a person's name. If I feel communication's not going well, mm -hmm. who do I talk to? I mean, district, not local, we're doing fine. But if the district's not responding, I know I'm not supposed to write to the chancellor, so who do I write to? Well, um, at the local level, it's me. In chancellor's cabinet, we discuss these items and presidents do have input into all this, but we're not totally responsible for it all. Right now, the chancellor's taking the lead on this, since we don't have a uh, vice chancellor of academic affairs that a lot of districts have, and um, I don't know why we have, don't have one, but we don't, so. Take that to, take that to this, the committee, the commission, we really should, because <coughs> that person presumably would stay in the role over the next couple of years, even while chancellors transition, so that you have some continuity. It's not enough to have I mean, Dave Furman is a vice chancellor, but he's really technology. He's not going to be able to step in and do accreditation. Neither can associate vice chancellor who reports to the vice chancellor. I don't think the two, oh, it's, what is it, Sue and Patricia? Mm -hmm. I mean, are they really the persons to do accreditation for an academic institution? I mean, it really, we have the academic EVPs do it, which is why it worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that you guys had to learn what to do and then make it happen. And we did say, what's up? I'll tell you. We do not have the structure for some of this. The vice chancellors play their role in conjunction with the presidents. Uh, presidents have responsibility for the campus, making sure we're taking care of our business. And the chancellor is responsible for the district. There's where it ends, right there. That's where it ends. There's nobody else to go to. Okay? But we work, try to work collectively as a team to make sure we're addressing all this. And presidents will have input into some of the processes. Erica is right. The district kind of level of data is more process driven. It's not the nuts and bolts like we do here at the campus level. Do that. There's a, there's a lot of process, but it's governance process. And that's what I'm saying. And then there's the, the board. You know, who do you go to the board? The chair of the board. That's the person charged with being the leader of the board to take care of governance issues. Okay. Anything else? Yes, sir. There's been just so much written recently revolve, uh, regarding a single board member that will remain unnamed and so forth. I just am wondering how much to make out of that, whether to be concerned with that, or is that something of, you know, a, a, what is it, a, I can't remember, something in a teapot and a kettle, you know, just a big storm and a little kettle that's going to blow over, or whether this is something that is genuinely serious and we do all need to think about and we need to decide how these trustees can represent the entire district and at the same time not seem like you know they're just picking and choosing between you know colleges in their area and so forth do you have a comment on that well uh <clears throat> for my well you gotta put it it's serious enough for the commission to mention it and want a special report but it's the board's responsibility to address it themselves. They are elected officials. It's clear from the standards of what their role is. The question is, have they fulfilled that role collectively as a body? And the commission is concerned about that, that they haven't addressed it. There's still issues there. It was kind of interesting, they said on the one, number seven, they had said it was fully addressed, which kind of is related to all this and the training of the board, understanding their role, et cetera, and role differentiation between the board, the chancellor, and the colleges, and all that, that they 
on one level, they said it was fully addressed, but then it's a special concern at the same time. So it's just uh, doing that. But it, it's serious enough that it was put in there. We have to address it. Uh, yes? Well, following up on what Chris asked about, it actually kind of follows what Sashida and Sashida and Linda were really focused on the, the seven district findings, which you mentioned and which Eric explained for us in great detail. Chris points out that people are concerned about this issue of the one, the one trustee, because that's what gets all. I'm reading the district's press release, and it, it focuses on that one sentence about one trustee, and there's no mention about the call of the district having five and a half findings that have yet to be fulfilled. Do we expect the district to provide a more thorough uh, release to the, to the public about the, the, the comprehensive nature of what the findings were? I can't speak for what the district is going to do. I don't know. Uh, that was, uh, I think that was pulled together because uh, everything happened Monday and we got all these letters and everything else and they pulled something together at least let the public know we got these and um, it was written as it is. So, And that's one of the most immediate concerns since that's such a short deadline, March 15th. We only get, what, a month. It has to be, a report already has to be written in a month. So that's why that special meeting on the 22nd becomes so crucial. So, yes, Ms. Sheila? The board are elected officials. What recourse would the board have if the ACC is so worried about one particular member of the board? Is there something they can do about it, or is... I think that's what they're trying to, to address now, try to understand. Well, I don't know. That's, I don't think there is anything that just said that there's anything. We have to draw our own policies and procedures because we have that as well in terms of the board expectations on ethics and all these other kinds of things. Um, you'd have to go back and study. And I think that's what the study session is going to be looking at very closely to see what options, what we have to do. Because uh, ultimately, we've got to demonstrate to the commission we've addressed that. And that's why I brought up the question, how do we know when we've done it? You know? How do we know we've arrived there and the commission says, yeah, you've addressed this issue? I think that's a big question. Yes? Yes, sir. What, what seems to be the problem with getting uh, accountability from the uh, district or the board? If we're, I mean, we, we have to be accountable to them. <coughs> Uh, as far as what we are supposed to do. Uh, what makes them accountable to us, uh, like you talked about earlier, uh, making sure that they do what they do, uh, what's the check uh, and balance uh, system here that seems to be not in place, and how does that get put in place? Well, part of the uh, check and balance is the commission, just because of the report. They're the ones monitoring all of this and make that judgment. With regard to internal processes, there are policies that dictate the role of the board, the decision making they have, etc. And I think there's, there's a check and balance built in there. But the question is, have we followed it? And I think that's what some of this is um, coming down to. Have we followed our own processes and, and policies? Right, but how do we, I mean, obviously if the, if the problem was addressed as, you know, lack of communication or whatever, I don't know what it is, I guess lack of communication. But uh, like someone said earlier, is there a person that you can specifically put this in writing to and give them a timeline or a deadline to get back to us to let us know that they have fulfilled uh, their responsibilities? Well, I think their their uh, accountability is to the public, obviously, and I think that's where it takes place at the board meetings. That's why I would encourage you if you want to. Hear the dialogue and see what they're going to, how they're going to address this. Go to the February 22nd meeting. And I think these are the kinds of things that people might want to ask or clarify to see how they're going to deal with it. Um, but there are other structures in place for some of that. And that's why they've been asked to go to training to understand their role and their fiduciary responsibilities, etc., so that they can become good board members and, and be accountable to the public as elected officials. Yeah, it's a special meeting. No, I think it's going to start at 5.30. It's normal. 
Anybody can go. It's just all of this is an open meeting, just like any meeting, and people can go and make comments. And uh, but it's a study session. Um, right. The regular board meeting is next week. The only thing that's going to take place regarding all of this is they're going to accept the report uh, officially. Then, then the 20 seconds is to discuss it in detail and how we're going to address it, especially the March 15th. I, I really do think that as the community, part of the community that they represent, we should get to see the letter. We should know who wrote it. And then there should be dialogue. If it's not a good letter or they don't address all the issues, we've got until October to try it. Because it may not be a good letter, is my feeling, is that somebody's got to write it, we don't even know who that's going to be. You mean the report? No, the, the response letter. I mean, I, I kind of got a sense of what Erica would do if you had to write a response letter. You would address every single one of those little tiny points. Right? The letter would take. And then you would bring it to some constituents and we'd look at it and we'd go over it. I'm not sure they have time to do that. So somebody's going to write that letter and I want to know. So we ha I don't really get a sense that we get to hear what they, they do. I don't know if the board will see the letter before it even goes out. Well, of course they would. Yeah. They would have to. They would have to. So on their so the meeting after that, the board will have to review that letter. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's the way they, they'll study it on the 22nd. I think the next board meeting after is March 13th, two days before the deadline. So between that time, the 22nd and the 15th, they all have to come to conclusion how they're going to address this, take other actions that they're going to do on March 15th. There'll probably be a draft report pulled together. That'll be obviously dealt with the board, and then it'll be sent to the campuses for our review and comment. Because remember, the, the district is not accredited. We are accredited. The letter goes on behalf of the colleges. So we will have input into that, into seeing the, uh, whatever they're, uh, it's drafted in, in, the, in the actual report itself. And because that's the first standard that we're not meeting, which is good communication going back and forth between the campuses and the district, if we don't get that chance to actually look at, because when the chancellor inserted his self-study into the accreditation report, it was in June after we'd already all gone home for the mm -hmm. summer. We need to see it in advance, and if the letter states we've seen it, then we really should have seen it. I mean, I really, we really need to address it in the letter and actually follow through on us getting, as a, as a community, getting the comment. Well, I think you'll find that that's going to take place. Yeah, I do. I think it has to. I think it has to. I think so, too. It'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, you know, um, no one else want to be in this position. Um, I think we should just congratulate ourselves, at least taking care of ours. But we got those not rest on our laurels. We've got to continue our uh, excellence at the campus. Um, we need to work with the district to address the one through seven that we can. And the board has to take care of the issue that would germane to them. And then beyond that, process it and follow through on our uh, directive to submit reports. Jim? On a happier note, do we have a plan or a way to communicate to the community that we did our part? Uh, well, <laughs> we're doing to our community. Yeah. I got the bad news about the district. Yeah. So, right. We should be blowing our horn. Yeah, totally. Maybe we need a press release. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that part. It's, 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 uh, yeah, you know, yeah, remember, this just happened Monday. <laughs> Today's Thursday. <laughs> A lot of things have gone on and um, a lot of dialogue and trying to see how we're going to address it, especially such a short time. I, I think it's important because if you read the comments in the Starkey Press, people are actually assuming that now that we're on probation, their units won't transfer or that units from the past won't transfer. There's all kinds of mythology yeah. springing up about it. And I think a, a press release might be a good thing at this time to assure people that Oxnard College has met its standards and its business as usual here and the credits are good and everything. Right. No, and I think that's a valid point, and it needs to be emphasized. Uh, that's why we put up on the slide, so you can all be the messengers as well. People understand what happens. We're still good. We're going to get financial aid. Our credits are going to transfer. Nothing is going to change from a functional level for us right at this point. For our students, that is. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Well, I think I saw one line in there where they said accreditation continues, but a lot of people in the public really don't understand what that means. You're right. I'll make that suggestion to our folks in the district. Everything, remember all our press releases and stuff go to the district. 
we can put something together and ask them to put it out there. When did that become policy? Oh, that changed about a year ago. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that changed in terms of the communication, press releases, and stuff like that. And that may be part of what they're looking at from the accreditation point of view, is little by little, our means of communicating. Registrar can't email the faculty. The yeah. colleges can't put out a press release. I mean, when you add all of this up across all three campuses, and I bet there was some complaining at Moorpark as well, they're hearing all of that. And I could, as they were talking to us, you, they'd be right up to the point where we'd say, well, that's a district issue, and they'd stop the questioning, and I'm sure they wrote it down in the notebook, and then they went to the district to ask. You know, what's, you know, and I'd like, if we did put out a press release and they didn't approve it, that would be very interesting to know. Well, I don't think that they wouldn't. It's I just. But uh, when we uh, we send out lots of press releases that the paper won't pick up, they are the ones that choose to put it in the paper or not. We should pressure. So we don't get to make those choices because I know I've seen I know personally we've sent out lots of things and it's not newsworthy or you know unless there's, there's a space filler, they might throw something in there. So you never know what they're going to do or not. So, but it's to our best interest to work together to get this all because it's our accreditation. You know. And uh, I, I prefer to say, let's move forward and get this done. Marty? Richard, does the, <clears throat> does the state chancellor's office play any role in any of this? No. I have nothing to do with it. Well, maybe if it was the money issue, if we had inadequate resources, yeah, then that might. Uh, but even at that, uh, they allocate to us, we would have to adjust. And if there was an issue of adequate resources, that's one of our standards. Uh, to be able to um, fully meet our educational needs, that could become an issue. But we have been addressing it, like all institutions of cutting back and aligning our programs and offerings with what we, uh, our resources. So, it doesn't necessarily meet the needs of the community, but from, a, from that level, uh, they want to make sure we have adequate resources to uh, offer the programs and services that we uh, do. It. Well, it's noon. I'm hungry. I'm sure you're hungry. Uh, thank you for coming. Help spread the word. And uh, I encourage you to come to the 22nd if you want to kind of hear the dialogue with the board. Uh, that's going to be a very important meeting for all of us. All right. Thank you for coming. By the way, all this is on our website as well under accreditation and our portals and everything. So anybody can access any of this information. And we're going to put this presentation there as well.